Hi everyone. So about a week ago, I put a status out on social media asking you how you arrange and organize your Prismacolor pencils. As you know, Prismas are my go-to pencil. It's the one I use the most and I'm very, very familiar with them. But the order that they come in in the box, the one on the chart that Prismacolor put out for you to fill in, it's never sat right with me. There are some very odd placements of colors within that chart um, and I've often tried to move them around and put them in blend order and things like that, but it's never been quite right. Um, now, everybody is different and everybody sees colours in different ways. So this chart is how I think the colours best go together. It may not be the same for you, but I thought if I'm doing this anyway, I might as well give you access to the chart just in case you are interested in putting Prisma colours in a different kind of order. It's very different to what you would see when you first get your pencils and the order that they come in. Um, I mean, I say it's very different. There are a lot of sections that are quite similar, particularly the yellows, but I have made a lot of movements within the pencils. So you might see pencils popping up in strange places or what might seem like strange places, but I think that's where they're most meant to go. I think the pencils work best when they're kept within colour families. This is the result of hours and hours of swatching and moving colours around and trying to fit them best where I thought they'd go. Um, but it's not perfect. There are certain colours that eluded me of where to place them and um, I've just had to go with the closest match that I could. Um, I'll tell you about those in a bit but what I've done is I've sectioned them into different families. So we've got yellow ochres, we've got bright yellows, um, we've got peaches and red violets, um, you know, the, the different kind of sections that you usually see across the colour wheel. And the uh, chart is actually across three pages because I didn't want to try and cram them all onto one page and not have any differentiation between the families because that's what the chart is all about. It's about sectioning the colours into what family they fit in best. So I've kept it quite sectioned. As you can see, it's one section here, one section here, and then another here, another here. And it's really sort of obvious and separated of where the colours are. That's just how, in my head, I thought it seemed best. So I'm going to fill out this chart and speed it up, but at the end of every section I'll stop and explain um, why I put certain colours in certain places and just give you a little bit of insight into why I've put them in these sections. Because there are, as I say, certain colours that don't seem to look right, but there is a reason for that. So yeah, I'm going to speed it up, I'm going to try and keep the video as condensed as possible while still giving you all the information and the insights that you hopefully will want to listen to. I want to quickly go over all of the different sections that I've come up with. So the first one is the ochre yellows. So this is like your brown, very warm, orangey yellows. Um, this is the yellow oranges. So the very, very bright yellows into oranges that you would use for, say, a sunset blend. Then we've got the reds. We've then got the pinks. And then the dusky pinks, these four here, those very vintage, soft, desaturated pinks. We've got peaches, which goes into, you know, a very dark, very reddish peach colour. So it goes right from the very tint of the colour to a very deep, dark, saturated hue. So that's just how I've, I think they work best. You might disagree. I've then got the red violets, uh, violets and blue violets. Down here is what I call like the standard blues. They've not got any green in them. They might have a slight bit of purple in them because I'm only working with the colours we've got in the set but that's it's the kind of order that I think they best go in. On the next page, we have the warm blues and then the cooler, lighter blues. This section here is a tricky one because it's all of those colours that are a little bit odd and you don't really know what they are. Are they a grey? Are they a green? Are they a blue? I think they're sort of bluish. If I just show you here really quickly, this is the section we're talking about. So we've got the jade green, the muted turquoise, which has obviously got a blue tone to it, but it's also very greyish um, and there's green in it as well. It's quite difficult, but I think if you look at them next to one another, that is how best they would naturally blend. So that's those. We've then got the bluish aquas and the greenish aquas. This is spring green, grass green, dark green, so a really nice bright green blend there. These are the duller, more desaturated greens, pale sage, olive green, kelp green. Um, it's what you would probably use for forests and things like that. These ones are brighter but more mossier greens. So we start off with the yellow chartreuse 
and it goes all the way through lime peel, moss green, sandbar brown, over to the ginger root. So it's really taking us from green into brown. And that's why I've put all of the uh, beiges down here because that's where I see them sort of sitting in the colour wheel. A lot of these are right at the front or at the top of the chart that Prismacolor puts out there. They're always with the yellows. But I sort of think this is where they sit best. So we've got the beiges there and then we've got our browns, our greys, starting off with French grey because they are the most brown grey. Going into your warm greys, your cool greys, your black. And then I've decided to keep the metallics and the neons separate at the end as they are within the original set. You could try and put them within the chart. A lot of people have and it works great. But for me, I don't use them often enough to want to integrate them with other colours. So I keep them separate so I know where they are. I can go straight to them if ever I do need to use them. So that's the quick explanation. I'm going to start colouring it in now and I will be back to you within each section to tell you all about it. Okay, so in the standard Prismacolor order, all of these colours here are integrated with the yellows, the really bright yellows and oranges. And I just thought that they look better put away on their own um, as ochres. So this is what I've tried to do. Now, these three at the end here, you might think look very odd. But the thing is, these don't really go in with the oranges either. Some of them can. You can put the cadmium orange hue after the orange if you wanted to but it then hinders me from carrying on with the blend that I've already created. So for example, this here is going to be a very bright yellow to orange blend like you would use, as I said, for a sunset. So if I put the cadmium orange hue and the pumpkin orange down here, it's not then going to naturally go into the pale vermilion and the poppy red. It's going to go down a very brown route and that's not what this blend naturally is. So. If you look at all these colours one by one, they will actually blend into each other really, really nicely. The cream will go into the jasmine, which will go into the sand yellow ochre. The golden rod goes beautifully into the mineral orange. That goes beautifully into the cadmium orange and again into the pumpkin orange. So even though it looks odd, this is the best way that I think they go together. So I'm going to get started on the next one. Okay, so hopefully you can see what I mean by all of the bright yellows and oranges that fit into this category and how it just doesn't integrate properly with all of these at the top. Now the one wild card here is the salmon pink, which usually goes with all of those beige colours and it was one of those difficult colours that I couldn't quite figure out where it went and I had to, instead of looking at the name of the colour, which says it's a pink, I had to think about what the actual colour looked like because a lot of these colours are named very strangely. They'll be called pink, they'll be called green or brown when they tend to fit somewhere else when you look at the actual colour. So the salmon pink ended up coming here. Now this looks a little bit odd when you go from all these beautiful bright sunny yellows and then it kind of goes a little bit pinkish, but it is a lot more orange than it is pink yet it doesn't quite fit in with the peaches or the beiges either. So what I would do is I would either skip that one completely if you're going straight for a sunset blend, so I'd go yellowed orange and then orange, or you could start from the salmon pink and you can see how the salmon pink really is a lighter, more desaturated version of the orange. If you look at those together, it really is the lighter counterpart to the orange. So that is its natural place, I think. But yeah, that's why I've put that in there. That's the best place I thought it could go. Okay, so just before I move on to the reds, I just want to make a little point about that salmon pink that we were talking about. So I have here a Charisma Colour, which is one of the original Prisma Colour pencils. And this Deco Orange is not a colour that exists anymore. But if I just swatch this out you can see how close this colour is to that salmon pink. And this is meant to be a lighter, more desaturated tint of the orange. So that's again helped me to put that salmon pink there because I can see how that perfectly goes into that. So yeah, that's just the reasoning behind it. Anyway, so we're on to the reds now and this is pretty much exactly how they are in the original chart. So you go from your carmine to permanent, scarlet lake, crimson red, crimson lake. 
Now the carmine red is another little bit of an odd one. Um, it's difficult to know where to put it because it's a very, very pinkish red. But again, it is too red to go in the pinks. It just doesn't sit right anywhere else. So that is where I've ended up putting it. Okay, so now we've got our lovely, bright, vivid pinks, starting off with the Deco Peach, which was another one of those difficult colours because it was too pink to go in the peaches and it's a little bit too peachy to go in the pinks, but this is where it best fits. So Deco Peach, Blush Pink go really nice together into the pink. I could have and should have probably put a section gap between these two because the hot pink is where it starts to change in tone. As you can see, it goes hot pink into process red, magenta, pomegranate, raspberry, Tuscan red. Now, Tuscan red is usually down in the browns as standard, but it is the perfect dark shade of the raspberry and it just has to go there. So hopefully you'll like how I've put those together. So we've got the dusky, more desaturated vintage pinks, as I call them here. We have the deco pink, pink rose, rosy beige and clay rose. And again, it's just how I naturally see them going together. These are the peaches with a red undertone. So these go really nicely together, one after the other. The beige tones, more brownish peaches come later, but these are the warm peaches that I think are best suited to a blend. So I should clarify at this stage that I've put all of the colours in sections from light to dark so that they can be blended from a light to dark gradient. So if you're looking at colours like mahogany red and wondering what the hell it's doing here in a peach blend, because it's clearly not peach itself, the way that I've put it together is that you can go from this light colour in stages to get to a very dark colour. The same here, we start off with deco peach in the pinks and we end up at Tuscan red. So hopefully that makes as much sense to you as it does to me. We've now got our red violets so you can see we start off with lavender which is completely different color to grade lavender so i've put that somewhere else and you can see we've got mulberry in here which is usually over here in the pinks but it's much more of a red violet uh, as a, again i find it really helps if you look at the color itself rather than the name of the color and if you think about other sets as well so the faber castell polychromos have a really nice set of red violets and they're actually called red violet light red violet so you look at these colours and you kind of match them against them and see that really these are meant to be together and not anywhere else. Okay, so these are what I would call the violets. Now, lilac can just as easily go after lavender as the grey lavender. You can make loads of different combos by mixing all of these up and some of them will go beautifully into others. But... Again, I'm just trying to justify why I've put them in a family together is because I believe that's where they should be um, as opposed to anywhere else. Now, some of the colours will have been put in a certain place because that is the least odd that they look. They might not be perfect there, but it's the least strange place to put them. So, yeah, these are the violets anyway. Um, again, black grape could just as easily go after black cherry. Dioxane purple hue could go after violet. But yeah, I've explained it. I just start second guessing myself. <laughs> right, okay, moving on to the blues. Okay, so as you can see with the appearance of the two violets at the end, we are still within a purpley sort of shade, but we're definitely moving into blue violet territory now. So we start off with the cloud blue that goes perfectly into the blue violet lake. We then move into imperial violet and the dioxane purple hue. So again, this is another one of those blends where you could split them and blend them with other things. But the imperial violet, for example, truly doesn't go anywhere else. It's not within this kind of set of violets. It's definitely not a red violet. So that's where I've put those. Okay, so I call these the standard blues. As you can see, it is not toned with anything purple or anything green. So it is a kind of a true blue, so to speak. These three at the end here could just as easily have gone into the uh, blue violets. But if you look at the blend again, China blue goes beautifully into ultramarine, which goes into violet blue, which goes into endanthrone blue. So again, I'm just trying to put these in an order that you could pick them out of your pencil case, sat next to one another and know that they are going to blend beautifully. Okay. 
Okay, so these are those lovely warm blues that I talked about earlier. This would make a beautiful gradient for the sky. Now, if your set is anything like mine, your electric blue is next to useless. It's so granulated and lays down really horribly. And this is where, again, they've taken out a beautiful colour that would have replaced that one when they changed from Charisma to Prisma. This is the Deco Blue 1015, and it's a really light version of the non-photo blue, which is already pretty light as it is when compared to the others, but it would just go beautifully in next to the sky blue light and the non-photo blue. So yeah, I'm really upset that they've discontinued that. But yeah, so this blend is self-explanatory. I think it's one of the best that go together the best in this chart, so yeah. So these are the blue greys. They are still quite warm, but they're definitely more desaturated than the blues across here. So we've got powder blue, blue slate, Caribbean sea, periwinkle and slate grey. Now slate grey is usually right at the end of the Prismacolor pencil order but it's just an odd place to put it. Just because it says grey it doesn't go with any of the greys at the end there. So that could just as easily go over here with the jade green, the celadon but it's best I think over here with these blue greys. So the Celadon Green was the bane of my life while doing this chart. Trying to decide where to put it was so, so difficult. It could easily go before the Sap Green Light here, but then the Pale Sage would just look very, very odd, and the Pale Sage goes beautifully into the Sap Green Light, so it would ruin that sort of blend. So it's ended up over here in this section. But if you wanted to kind of ignore that for a moment, because it is a little bit too green, we're still within the blues here. So Jade Green is actually a blue undertone, and then you've got muted turquoise, beautiful together. Uh, that goes lovely into the Mediterranean blue. And the peacock blue is, again, the same kind of tone as the Mediterranean. So even though they look a bit odd all together like that, they do all blend lovely into one another. Now these here are the blue aquas. And it's pretty self-explanatory because they all go together in the standard Prismacolor order anyway. But yeah, they are definitely blue aquas. And then there are green aquas, which is what we're coming on to now. Now this is my favourite family in the whole chart because it does house my favourite Prismacolor which is Parrot Green and as you can see there's a massive difference between these now. These now look a lot bluer don't they than your standard what you would expect an aqua to look like. So you have your blue aquas and you have your green aquas and again we're going from light to dark, the grey green light goes beautifully into the light green and so on. Okay, so these three greens here, really self-explanatory again, very, very bright, saturated greens from light to dark. Then we have these more desaturated, foresty kind of colours. So remember when I said the Celadon green would go lovely before the sap green light, but it wouldn't quite work after the pale sage? You can see there how that would be far too grey and just very odd in between those colours here. So again, they all go beautifully into one another if you look one after the other. Hopefully you'll agree. The Pale Sage is a beautiful colour. It's overlooked. It's very desaturated, as I said. Very match for these kind of greens to get into the lighter end of the spectrum. Now, Apple Green was another one of those evil colours that didn't want to go anywhere else. So it looks really good after the yellow chartreuse and the chartreuse but it looks really odd next to the lime peel and the lime peel looks perfect next to the chartreuse. So again, it's just one that I've had to slot in there that will work with those colours, but not work like that. It's, you know, that's just how it goes. Then we go into the brownish greens, the very mossy colours. So you've got your moss green, your green ochre, your artichoke and ginger root, which for some reason Prismacolor put as standard right at the top of the chart with all of the yellows and, and those kind of colours and they're just clearly not meant to go there. So the artichoke and the green ochre are absolutely perfect. The ginger root is perfect with the artichoke. So remember how I talked about the reddish peaches over here? These are the brown peaches and they don't fit in with those colours at all when you look at them side by side. They're much more suited to being down here with the browns. So again, the eggshell and the beige featured very high up in the chart originally. They work far better here.
So as you can see, this is the warm palette of browns and this is the cooler palette, again going from light to dark so you can do some lovely blends. The French greys work best here rather than any other grey because they can carry on from these browns and create a blend that way as well and they're just more matched with those browns. So I'm not going to bother colouring in the last bit of the sheet on camera because we know what the greys look like but hopefully you've enjoyed watching me put this chart together and uh, you agree that the placements are pretty good for families. I mean again I've said that there are colours that I'm not happy with myself so you might want to change things around but the chart is in the description if you want to print it out and colour it in yourself. Hopefully it's been useful for you. I'd like to do a quick shout out to my friend Mandy Ronaldson over on Instagram who was also creating her own blend chart for Prismas at the same time and we sort of bounced ideas off of each other and it was really fun. So yeah, thank you so, so much for watching. Enjoy the chart and I will see you soon on Colour with Claire.